Hello. In this video, we will see some basic concepts regarding fluid filtration across capillaries. We will cover stalling forces and filtration coefficient. Let's get started. Fluid filtration across capillaries is determined by capillary filtration coefficient and net filtration pressure. The net filtration pressure in turn is determined by stalling forces. First we will study stalling forces. This is a capillary. This is its arterial end. This is venous end. And the remaining area is interstitium. Now the stalling forces are the driving forces that move the fluid across the capillary. They include hydrostatic pressure and collared osmotic pressure in the capillary as well as in interstitium. The sum of these forces determines whether there will be net filtration or absorption. Let's see each one of them one by one. First, hydrostatic pressure. As per the name, it is exerted by fluid. Hydrostatic pressure in the capillary pushes fluid out of the capillary. At the arterial end, it is about 30 mmHg and it falls to 10 mmHg at the venous end. Now the hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium. Yes, as you might have already guessed, positive hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium tends to move fluid back into the capillaries. However, due to fluid removal by lymphatics, it is in fact negative in loose tissues like lung and subcutaneous tissues. Being negative, it pulls fluid out of the capillary. It's about minus 3 mmHg. Now the collared osmotic pressure. It is exerted by proteins. Collared osmotic pressure in the capillary is exerted by plasma proteins. It pushes the fluid inward. It is about 28 mmHg. Moving to the last one, collared osmotic pressure in the interstitium. Although capillary wall is highly impermeable to proteins, some proteins do leak through pores and by transcytosis. These proteins and proteoglycans contribute to the collared osmotic pressure in the interstitium. It tends to pull the fluid into the interstitium. It's about 8 mmHg. See, small ions like sodium and chloride freely move across the capillary wall. So they do not contribute to the osmotic driving force. Now the net filtration pressure. It is calculated as capillary hydrostatic pressure minus interstitial hydrostatic pressure minus plasma collared osmotic pressure plus interstitial collared osmotic pressure. When it is positive, there will be net fluid filtration across the capillary. And when it is negative, there will be net fluid reabsorption. At the arteriolar end, capillary hydrostatic pressure is 30 mmHg. Interstitial hydrostatic pressure is negative 3 mmHg. Plasma colored osmotic pressure is 28 mmHg. And interstitial colored osmotic pressure is 8 mmHg. So net filtration pressure is 13 mmHg. Being positive, it favors filtration of the fluid. At the venous end, capillary hydrostatic pressure drops to 10 mmHg, whereas others are largely unchanged with interstitial hydrostatic pressure being minus 3, capillary collared osmotic pressure being 28, and interstitial collared osmotic pressure being 8 mmHg. So the net filtration pressure is minus 7 mmHg, and it favors reabsorption of the fluid. See, the reabsorption pressure at the venous end is considerably less than the filtration pressure at the arterial end. However, at the venous end, capillaries are more numerous and more permeable. So even this less pressure is also sufficient for reabsorption of most of the filtered fluid. Some fluid and proteins that are left are taken up by lymphatics to eventually return to the blood. So this was all about stalling forces and net filtration pressure. Now let's talk about capillary filtration coefficient. In simple words, it is permeability of the capillary. It depends on number and size of pores in the capillary as well as number of capillaries. It is expressed as net fluid filtration rate for each mmHg of net driving force. The average capillary filtration coefficient for the whole body is 6.67 ml per minute. However, capillaries in different tissues have different permeability. So exact filtration coefficient is different in different tissues. That was the filtration coefficient. So finally, filtration is the capillary filtration coefficient multiplied by net filtration pressure. 
See, this is a very basic understanding regarding filtration. We will go into detail of each of these factors in a separate video. Now let's have a quick summary. Stalling forces include hydrostatic pressure in the capillary that favors filtration, hydrostatic pressure in the interstitium which being negative again favors filtration, colored osmotic pressure in capillary that favors reabsorption and colored osmotic pressure in the interstitium that favors filtration. Net filtration pressure is the sum of all these forces. At the arterial end, it's 13 mmHg causing net fluid filtration and at the venous end, it's minus 7 mmHg causing net reabsorption. Capillary filtration coefficient is a measure of capacity of capillary to filter water. Finally, filtration is a capillary filtration coefficient into net filtration pressure. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.